What's going on guys, Spud here and welcome to a brand new episode of The Roundup. In today's episode, we're going to be talking about Vegas Legion destroying a top 4 team for the second time. I know they didn't destroy Optic, but two wins against top 4 teams in a row for the Legion. Minnesota Rocker with a shock win against Optic, clutching up from 5-2 down in the Search and Destroy on map 5 to get 10 valuable CDL points. And what's wrong with Optic's playstyle at the moment? We're also going to be looking at all the rest of the games, doing our predictions, and also having a look at the standings. With only two weeks left now of online qualifiers for this year, what we do? As always, if you are new, please drop a subscription. It is really appreciated. And drop a like if you've enjoyed the video. Uh, obviously, we uploaded two videos yesterday. Um, one of them, as you can see here, the reacting to the new Life is Strange trailer. I still can't believe that we've got a new Life is Strange. And it's coming out in October. Um... The support on that was really good. It was a 1 of 10. Um, so that's really appreciated. Without further ado, let's just get straight into this. Because there's quite a few games. There wasn't like... I'd say there was like two shocks. Like real shocks. Obviously the Vegas Legion's one of them. Let's just get straight into it. Obviously from Friday's matches all the way to Sunday's. So, starting off, we've got Seattle Surge versus the New York Subliners, and this ended 3-1 to New York Subliners. And this was a really good series out of Sib, who dropped who dropped a 1.55, um, 101 kills. He also had the most kills and the least deaths. A uh, really good series out of Sib. You know, people talk about him being the weak the weak spot of the roster the, like from major one to major three but i think that's like kind of dropped off now i think he's probably been their second best player in this split behind hydra so yeah he's doing well on the other side all four played well the rest of them just weren't as good they did have a really good map one though obviously all four and a boozer doing pretty good and it was a close rio even though they were heavily outslayed by the subliners. Surge did keep it close, but Sib dropping 40. Um, got them the dub. And it was a much needed win for the subliners, especially with Seattle Surge being probably the fifth or sixth best team. They're in that top six bracket now. They did need to get this dub, and they did. Um, they showed what they've still got for now. Um... After that, we've got Minnesota Rocker versus Miami. This was a huge matchup for who makes champs. Obviously, every CDL point counts. With Minnesota Rocker's schedule, obviously nobody thought they'd beat Optic. Realistically, this was their best chance to win a series. And they actually did not. They did go to round 11 on Karachi, just like they did against Optic. Um, but they lost, the, they lost all the respawns. Metals had a good series. Accuracy struggles continue. But yeah, it is looking good for Miami. Um, I think they're on 150 points with three games left. They have got a cruncher against Carolina, where I think if they win that, I think Miami will probably make champs. But if Carolina win it, then Miami are really in that, that danger zone. Because I think Miami have to play... Let me just check who Miami have to play, actually. Uh, it's not going to show us. Oh, there we go. It was just taking a while. Uh, so Miami's matches are uh, Carolina, which is huge. Seattle Surge, which is huge. But I think Surge will probably win that. But you never know. And then FaZe, which they'll probably lose. So yeah, it won't be, won't be an easy one for the Heretics, but... Uh, it was an important win there. They actually had three matches this weekend, which was kind of crazy. I'm not sure as to why that actually happened yet. And then another heartbreak for Ravens. But I actually saw this coming at, when it was 2 or For some reason, breaking points really slow. Um, but as you can see, FaZe winning 3-2. There we go. It was a close map one, but Faze are terrible at uh, sub-base. 
it was around 11 in map 2 which carolina managed to get the uh to get the dub and then the invasion was pretty dominant from fairs the six star was dominant from fairs and the rayo search and destroy was dominant from fairs and unfortunately carolina's wars continue before obviously the the split you look at that lag match and you think that's a guaranteed win they lose i think even if they lost the game fives to fairs in new york if they beat lag it would have been fine obviously they didn't so if they lost if they won that game though against phase it would have been really important for their chances of potentially making champs then we had boston that was it for the friday then we had the Saturday matches, which was Boston versus Seattle, and Huke went. Huke was the nuke. Let's say that. 1.6, he went double positive in the control as well. And even though they won the hard point by 105 points, they actually were outslayed. Major Maniac having a good map. There was people saying that he was kill whoring, but he had he did have the most hill time on the Boston Breach team. I just think they're horrendous. Next year, right, I think Beans, Beans will be on a roster, whether it's Boston or not. I think his best chance of being in the, the league is Boston. But look, he had the most damage in the lobby. And look at the difference between his damage and his teammates. We'll have to see. I think Snoopy honestly could go back to challenges because this build around Snoopy project has failed miserably for Boston Breach. Priester, honestly, world champion last year. I I think he'll probably still get on a roster just because of the fact he won champs last year and he's won other events. I I could honestly see like a Minnesota potentially picking Priester up just like it was back in the day, but we'll have to see. Uh, but yeah, good performance except from all four, but I'm sure he won't mind. Ten huge points for Seattle, which puts them fifth in the cdl standings then probably i would say this is the shock of the weekend because Op optic obviously lost to minnesota as we'll mention briefly but that was a game five and it was a it was a throw from optic ultimately this was just dominant from uh from the legion so map one was pr was was actually favoring New York, and then Legion I think got like a hundred, it was like a hundred to ten in the terms of points for like the next two hills, and that that gave them the win. You know, Legion were really good at made they were decent on Major One and Major Two, and then they got rid of Purge, brought in a seam, didn't work, brought in Johnny top twelve at LAN, but. He'd only had like two series, so they were never really going to get rid of him, I don't think. They kept the roster, and now it's starting to pay off, and now they're in that champs bracket, content, that champs contention. I do think now, personally, I think there's only this... I think the top four is the top four. I think Seattle are definitely going to make champs. I think the other spots or six... The, the last three spots are decided by five teams. I think it's five or is it six five i think but yeah um high rise control seems to be a really strong map for vegas legion and i'm not just saying that because they beat optic on it because that was you know the the, the uh the blow in the propane cheese but i remember i swear they played miami at lan in major three on that and i think that was when geo got 40 kills but i could be wrong and then moving on to the final, not the penultimate game for Saturday. Now, I actually predicted this before. I predicted 3-1, but I did think the Ravens would actually beat the Thieves because of the inconsistency of the Thieves' SMGs. But it, this was a throw from the Ray, uh, from the Thieves, to be honest. Uh, first map was really good from um, Carolina. Obviously, their map pick. Gwyn masterclass all series Gwyn was fantastic and he was good against phase as well so the people that said he was washed because they had like two or three three or four bad series is ridiculous takes uh the s the search and destroy 
You know, I think it should have gone to a round five, but Kremp won the 1v1. Um, I, I thought Control would have been won by Carolina. I was really surprised how poor they were on it today. Uh, so on Sun Saturday. And then this was Thieves' map pick, and they were absolutely smoked. TJ Halley and Gwyn just destroyed everyone. And then this was a 5-3. Look, you can see here, it was it was 3-0 was three, three at one point. It was 3-0, 4-1, 5-3, and then 6-5. Um, but yeah, it was a really good... Uh, it, was a, it, it was a throw from the Thieves, it realistically, though. But Ravens did have to win this. They beat... If, if Ravens lost this with, with Rocco winning Optic, I think they wouldn't have made champs. It was done. Could they beat Optic next week? I mean, I thought Optic would come out in 3 or 3 or slash 3-1 Rocker. I still think Ravens will probably lose to Optic, but you, they, they, they took Phase to a map 5. They took New York to a map 5, so they could easily take Optic to a map 5. Uh, but yeah, we're going to talk about this Search and Destroy. I've actually got... Um, I, this, is the, this is the round... That, I think Thieves, when they lost this round, they just had no composure because they made it into a 4v2 to win the series. It would have put them on 155 CDL points, which I think would have just meant if they got top 8 at LAN, they've got tough... Their, their, their remaining games are quite difficult. If they get top 8 at LAN, win this game, top 8 at LAN, they'll, be into, they'll make champs. Their, their remaining matches are really tough. I'll show you them after we've uh, broke these two rounds down but let's just get straight uh let's just obviously get straight into it um it's gonna move the webcam there just so just so you're able to see uh the, the scoreboard on the raven side smoke and chaos tj needs timing to stay alive they're everywhere around them but the team already takes down one Gone. not able to get anything for them the trades have gone against them and felony is in a horrible position but gets a kill anyway and it's back down to a two versus two the ravens pull it out of the fire everybody's panicking everybody's tweaking out too fellows full sending it gwyn is repositioned gwyn is in the perfect spot felony just needs to iron up and chill Gwyn can see everything, and for these, you gotta trade him out. You gotta make sure you 180. Can't line up, but you give it to him. And Gwyn in felony, the bailout duo. So a few things. Obviously, it was good, good play from Thieves to make it to obviously uh for uh to get the first two kills. Um, but then the issue for me, I mean, I'll sh uh. Wait, oh, that is the wrong round, isn't it? This is... Uh, sorry about that. So my issue was that they get the two kills there really good. You know, they probably think there's maximum one person at B. They, I mean, they obviously thought both Gwyn and Felony were at B. Well, it was actually just Felony. Nasty, realistically there, with the fact that Felony's thrown his tactical should be able to get a free kill on him. And then, even if he doesn't, Ghostly should be there to trade. So then, Ghostly's on that real, real tough head glitch. You can see that most of his body is covered because of it. Whilst Felony's shooting Ghostly, Nasty obviously can, uh, can either run or stay there and just wait for Felony to move to the right. Unless he obviously moved to the left. Uh, he's on... You know, his health's less than half, and then Nasty runs at him, which realistically is probably the right thing to do, but obviously they, they weren't sure where Gwyn was, so Gwyn could have easily just killed Nasty. So at the same time, and had 51 seconds, I think Nasty actually should have waited. Um, But this, this kill here from Gwyn was huge, because Joe deceives can't get to him ghostly can't get to him and it was just a free kill on kremp which then takes it to a 2v2 at this point i was really shocked that felony was actually going for this because he's on 6 hp i reckon joe deceives was probably one tap but ghostly was there if ghostly kills felony thieves win this map 
but Gorsley was trying to cover Joe DeSeves. They were trying to find out where Gwyn was. And then obviously Gwyn repositioned. He could have shot Gorsley there, but he didn't. He'll have just told Felony that he was there. And then it was the right idea for Thieves to, to both be together, but someone should have checked behind because he just, he just made a long route through the middle of the map. And yeah, really good from... Uh, from the thieves, uh, from the ravens. There, we're just gonna watch the round eleven now. Coming up from Gwen, dodging IRL as well, but the play call clearly over towards B. Bees are here for it though. Two AR players on the cross. The sun gonna slow them down in their tracks. No first blood just yet. They've made it to square. Smoke's down. Now they're gonna try and get it. That bomb is still not in sight. Clayster is really deep in their own spawn. Here comes the cross. He's got it. I think Ghost is preparing a nade. No dodge, no trophy. Gotta make sure your head's up about it. But look at the flank. Clayster's not quite there. Maybe just enough time. DJ tagged up, but he's able to get the bomb down for the 4v4. That's a 4v4 with bomb down. Fanny will get Ghosty. Clayster still alive on the flank. The rest of the thieves are hunting him as well. He's gonna go down to nasty. 35 seconds, three versus three. And they are packed into the site. The Ravens have made their castle. The thieves have a smoke down. Kremp moving. Nasty moving. Felony gets Joe. Everybody pouring through. The Ravens now have the advantage. Nasty tries to get across. Felony with another one. And that'll be it. The Ravens break. Their map five curse. They take down the thieves. They come back in the SD. And uh, obviously, that round 11, you know, TJ is known for his SD strength. And obviously, uh, basically making Ghosty use the nerd was quite good. I'm surprised that Nasty didn't kill. TJ though when he was on the bomb with regarding Clayster obviously it was and the thing is I'm not sure as to why Ghost didn't back off there it looks like he actually pushed a bit yeah here Clayster should do better ultimately he was in a bit he was in a bit of a, a shit position really because he literally couldn't move still alive on the flank the rest of the are hunting him as well he's gonna go down to nasty 30 um, but then after that, it was just good defensive control. It's hard to break a 3v3 on the B-bomb in Invasion. So, yeah, really good work from the uh, from the Ravens there. And, yeah, ultimately their season was done if they didn't win that, especially with Rocker winning. And the final match on Saturday, obviously Miami again. Against LAG, this was huge for LAG because they had Faze on the Sunday. I think, realistically, LAG had to win this to keep their champs hopes alive. Uh, and they didn't. It was actually quite a close series, though. 21 in the sub base, round 11 on the high rise. I'm pretty sure it was 5 1 at one point. Let me just check that. Oh, so it was 2 2 2 2 or 5 2, and then 5 5, but they just couldn't win it. And then it was a high rise, and uh, yeah, that was a breakdown actually in the high rise. I should have got a clip for that. Uh, but yeah, it was huge out of metals on that. Uh, on that high rise right at the end i think it was like a 1v4 he killed three of them it might have been a 1v3 but he killed two or three of them and then the other person couldn't get to the point in time so he, so he captured it because it was already two ticks but yeah i think for lag it's done um oh actually i didn't check i'll just go back to Where's the thieves? I just want to check who the thieves actually play. I think they have quite a tough schedule. Oh yeah, Toronto and Fairs next weekend, and then Legion and New York. And of that Legion match is huge for both teams because Legion are on one hundred and thirty points, and the thieves are on one hundred and forty-five. I think that the thieves lose to the other three teams, so it all comes down to that, to that match. Um, and then moving on to the Sunday, we had LAG again, playing Fares, and honestly, the, the, th the Gorillas were so close to winning, Fares had won sub-base once this year, and they've made it, t the, the, they don't play it, it's normally a veto for them, because they just can't crack it, they can't, they can't play it ultimately, but they do manage to win. Uh, and then they, yeah, close out the rest. I mean, Selium got a 3kd. 
Yeah, unfortunately for LAG, I think it's it's done. They've got three matches left. Ooh. They have Boston Breach. I, th I think, well, Seattle, they lose to Seattle. You never know with Vegas. I think Vegas will probably win that, though. Boston. Like, maybe their champs hopes aren't fully finished, but I think you'll probably need 165 points to get champs. So they're probably going to have to win two of these matches and get top six. I still don't think they'll make champs. If they had, I mean... I, I didn't think they would have before, would before, but obviously the fact that they beat Ravens. Then we had Toronto versus Miami. Um, pretty good from pretty good showing from Toronto, except in the search and destroy where Metals and Vickle had a really good map. I think uh, Toronto will be happy though. Um. Overall, with this performance, it's crazy that there's some teams that still have four matches. It's because normally the qualifiers are five weeks. It feels like we've been on for three weeks, but it's only two. But yeah, Ultra take the dub here. Um, you know, a pretty good showing, I would say. Um, yeah, they'll be happy with that. And then the final match, it's it's another heartbreak on a Sunday if, if you're an Optic fan. They lose to the Minnesota Rocker, who probably should have changed their roster, and now they find themselves 2-2 two and two in, in the top eight for champs. Um, you know, Pred, Dashy, I mean, they played well Optic except Kenny. Um, you know, Accuracy didn't really do have a good series, except on the final map, which ultimately won them the, the game. Two round 11s and a dominant Vista for the Minnesota Rocker. They'll be happy, ultimately. It's 10 huge points. I'm just going to check who they still have to face. Um... Oh, so this is what I mean. That, that Beating Optic, nobody saw that coming. People would have probably thought they'd be on 130, maybe 140 points. Uh, but if they, I don't think, even though they beat Optic, I still think they lose to New York and Toronto. If they beat Vegas, I think they can get a top eight at LAN to get champs. I think if they lose to Vegas, they have to get top six. And I do not see this team getting top six. I'm not sure with Minnesota yet. I'll probably have made my decision on who's going to make champs before the LAN, like the after the last online qualifiers. When I do my predictions. But I am going to uh, show this round that ultimately loses Optic the match. So it's 5-3. Minnesota are on the attack. They're going to plant at B. Which is obviously harder to retake than A. But yeah, this is the Optic can't be doing this. Frag looks like it's a little bit too deep. And it is. So now you got a post plant up if you're Minnesota 3v4. Well, Shots is able to at least find one. Now Smoker Nick is invested to try to keep Linz alive. Accuracy Frankfurt. responding with a double 2v2. Getting out of the tight corner. Standy with the rival. Finds the elimination. Just down to Shotzi. 1v2 situation. Wants to isolate onto Standy. Finds that cleanly. Now it's down to Candy. Find the Iceman. 1v1 with Accuracy. Who is repositioned. Bottom bridge. Shotzi not expecting it. We didn't see it from Accuracy's perspective. So I think that was 3 from Accuracy. But obviously the fact that it was a 4v2. And then Optic lose that round. Honestly, at 5-4, I'm thinking they might not win this. But then this this round 10 was terrible from Optic. And the round 11 was just as bad, if not worse. And yeah, well done to Minnesota for winning. Um, It gives them a chance to make champs now. Because I don't think anyone had them getting top 8. Uh, We're going to do... Our predictions... Right, we're gonna have to scroll down. Sorry to all the challenges games. We just want the CDL ones. Right, Minnesota Rocker versus New York. Re also, by the way, Optic and New York have to start getting a have to start winning these matches because they might not get the bracket they want for winners. 
an optic won't get top or what i don't think at this rate optic will be able to win uh to, to get number one seed unless phase don't get in the top three for champs so i think minnesota new york will be 3-1 to new york optic ravens i'm gonna go 3-1 optic it wouldn't even surprise me if ravens won Obviously, I want close to get into champs, but I can't really be dealing with three optic three optic elves in a row. But we'll we'll see. I'd rather optic one though. Breach phase, yeah, I don't even want to watch that one. Three or though, of course. <coughs> and then we've got three bangers. In terms of champs qualification, these three are massive. I think if Miami win, they should get champs. I'm going to go 3-2 three, three, Ravens. I think they're going to play their fifth map five out of five. And I think they'll win this one as well. And they'll get 10 huge CDL points. Then we've got LA Gorillas versus The Breach. I, I'm going to have to go LA Gorillas 3-1. I'm not, I'm not going for any more Boston Breach wins now. Uh, Seattle versus Vegas. This is actually probably the match of the weekend. Unless I'm... Or maybe Optic New York, actually. I'm going to go three... This Whoever wins this, I think, will be the number five seed for now. The fifth best team. Do you know what? I'm actually going to go for Vegas. I'm going to go Vegas 3-1. I just think there's more consistency on their SMGs. And then we've got Toronto LA Thieves. I think this will be 3-1 Toronto. Oh, wait, right, that's on the Saturday. And then Sunday, Toronto Minnesota, I think will be 3-1 three, three, Toronto. Thieves versus Fares, I think will be 3-1 Fares. New York versus Optic. I think will be... 3-2 Optic. Yeah, because... Yeah, I'll go 3... It's 3-2 three either way, but I'll go Optic. And then the last match is... LA Gorillas versus Vegas Legion, which I think will probably be 3-0 three, three Vegas. So if Vegas could win two games this weekend, I think they could make champs. So. Then we've got the standings. Um... So these are the standings currently. They have actually made a slight mistake. Ravens are ahead of Legion because of the head to head, but that's fine. Um I think Ravens are ahead of Rocker as well when it comes to head to head, just in case. I think it could end up being a head to head for who makes champs. Boston obviously not making it. The top four are already in. Forty points separate fifth five to eleven. I think Surge are gonna make it. And then everyone else, I don't think certain. I think Thieves would have been a pretty much as certain if they beat Ravens, but they haven't. I think Vegas are looking good. Look, I wouldn't obviously I wouldn't be surprised if it's Surge, Heretic, Thieves, and Legion. And Rocker and Ravens and Gorillas miss out. But anything goes. It just depends like this is the thing. Because of Optic losing two games. Optic on New York will lose at least three because they've both already lost twice and they play each other next weekend. Whoever loses three matches is probably going to be is probably going to be seed five or six. If they're seed six, we could be seeing them play Toronto potentially, which then makes losers bracket really bad because losers bracket's not the worst if you're playing teams that aren't in the top four. But the thing is, with how these online matches are going, we might see someone drop out like new york did in major one and then the ravens actually beat them so obviously whoever makes winners bracket you obviously want that advantage of playing another match because if you win your match at winners bracket you're guaranteed top six and i think that on its own is absolutely massive i think you're guaranteed top six yeah 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 you're guaranteed top six and that's 25 cdl points but at the same time, I'd, I'd so I'd rather be seed eight and play fairs than be seed nine and be in losers. But realistically, you are looking to get Boston in round. Whoever gets Boston 
or LAG in round one of losers is hit a gold mine. They'll they've got the best chance of getting top eight. Um obviously MVP of the week. Don't even know. Uh I'll probably go with Attach. Just for his performance against uh New York. Anyone from the Legion to be honest. Choose who you want. Thank you very much for watching though. That is gonna be the end of this episode of the roundup. Um as always, if you've enjoyed please do like subscribe if you're new it is really appreciated this will be out tomorrow 6 p.m which is tuesday and uh yeah keep an eye out for any of the videos there's going to be quite a lot of videos during the summer um and yeah thank you very much for watching have a great rest of your day bye for now